In this video, we're going to go through the sample Key Stage 2 reading paper. So we can see from the front cover of the reading booklet that we have three different texts and we'll need to answer questions on each of these. So what I like to do first is open the reading booklet and then spend just about a minute scanning the first text. First we can read the title, so that's Space Tourism, and here we have Shooting Stars, Be a Space Tourist at Home. Then, if we have an introduction like we do here, we can read that. In 1969, a man walked on the moon for the first time. After this, many people thought that space travel would be available by the year 2000 and that we would all be space tourists. However, here we are in 2015 and space tourism is still an impossible dream for most of us. It is a reality for only a very few, very rich people. And now, if we look at the pictures, we can see that we have pictures of astronauts and satellites, and on this page we have two people looking up at the stars. So we can see that we have a non-chronological report with facts about space. Now rather than reading the whole text straight away, what I like to do, after reading the title and the introduction and looking at the pictures, is to go to the answer booklet and look at the first question. Look at the introduction. Why is space tourism impossible for most people? So the word impossible means not possible. But we don't even need to know that, because if we look at the introduction, we have the word impossible in the text. Space tourism is still an impossible dream for most of us. It is a reality for only a very few, very rich people. So space tourism is only possible if you're very rich. We get the mark for explaining that it is impossible for most people because it costs too much. So you could have written, most people can't afford it, or it is too expensive. What I'm showing here is the mark scheme that adults use when we mark your papers. So this first bullet point explains what you need to have included, and below that we have some examples of things that you could have written. I won't always read this out, but remember you can pause the video to check if you want to. Question 2. How would you get from the spacecraft to the space hotel? Let's keep on reading the text. We'll probably find the answer here, under the subheading, How would you get to your space hotel? In the future, there may be hotels in space for all the tourists. It wouldn't take long for the space shuttle to get out of the Earth's atmosphere. Then, without Earth's gravity, you would become weightless. So, the first part of the paragraph is about how the space shuttle would leave Earth, not how you would get to the hotel. But next we have, Arrival at the hotel would be like an aeroplane parking at an airport, but you would leave the cabin floating along the access tube, holding on to a cable. So, it's like an aeroplane parking, but that's not our answer, because that's just a comparison. It doesn't explain how. We need to write that you would leave the cabin floating along the access tube. So, to get the mark, you need to write, or you need to refer to floating down the tube. And holding the cable is in brackets because you can write that as well, but you don't have to. If you've written floating down the tube, you've got the mark for this question. Question 3. Look at page 4. According to the text, what could you do on your space holiday? Give two examples. We'll probably find the answer for what you could do on your space holiday in this section here, because we have the heading, What would a space holiday be like? Once in the hotel, you could admire the unique views of Earth and space and enjoy the endless entertainment of being weightless. And there would always be the possibility of a spacewalk. So here, they've given us three things. One is that you could admire the unique views of Earth and space. 
The second is to enjoy the endless entertainment of being weightless. And the third thing is the possibility of a spacewalk. So to get two marks for this question, we need to refer to two of those things. We could look at Earth or space or admire the view. We could experience weightlessness or enjoy activities associated with floating. Or we could go on a spacewalk. So, although there are three possible answers, because the question says give two examples, to get two marks, we only need to make two of these points. And notice the question says according to the text, so it's really important that we look for answers in the text. We can't just imagine what we might want to do on a space holiday. We've got to find our answers in the text. So we can't write take photos of the moon, for example, because that isn't mentioned in the text. Question 4. How much did the first space tourist pay to go into space? We want to know how much did the first space tourist pay. So we can scan the text and we know that we're looking for an amount of money. And if we quickly scan the text, we can see that we have a pound sign here. In fact, the first tourist in space was Dennis Tito in 2001. His trip cost him around £14 million. So we have our answer. We can write £14 million or around £14 million. Question 5. How can you tell that the International Space Station is very large? So, the only section that we haven't read on this page is this one here. And we can see, if we look at the paragraph, that it mentions the International Space Station. Fact, the Russian Space Agency offers flights on board a spacecraft to the International Space Station, ISS, where people can stay. The ISS was built in 1998, and it is so big that it can be seen from Earth. Tickets to the ISS are very limited. Big is another word for large, and it's so big that it can be seen from Earth. So here we get the mark for referring to the fact that it can be seen from Earth. Question 6. How did Anusha's trip into space make history? They've not mentioned Anusha on page 4, so let's read the next page. Who has already had a holiday in space? In 2006, Anusha Ansari became the first female space tourist when she made the trip from Russia to the International Space Station, ISS. Anusha stayed on the ISS for 8 days and kept a blog, an online diary. Parts of her blog are shown here. Now we don't have the phrase make history, but we do have our answer here. If something makes history, that means it's important. And we're told that in 2006, Anusha Ansari became the first female space tourist. So we get the mark for recognising that she was the first female space tourist. And we have to write first female space tourist. We can't write first female in space because that's not what the text says. The text says tourist, so that's what we need to write. Question 7. Look at the text box, who has already had a holiday in space? Complete the table about Anusha's trip into space. First, where did she start her trip? So if we read the text box, we have, in 2006, Anusha Ansari became the first female space tourist when she made the trip from Russia to the International Space Station, ISS. So if it was a trip from Russia, that tells us where she started. Now, where did she stay in space? Well, we know it was a trip to the International Space Station, but just to check that she stayed there, let's read the next sentence. Anusha stayed on the ISS for eight days and kept a blog, an online diary. So, that tells us that the trip was to the ISS, or International Space Station, or Space Station, and 
How long did she stay in space? The sentence we've just read tells us that she stayed for eight days. Question 8. Look at Anusha's blog entry for September the 25th. Find and copy a group of words that show that Anusha wrote her blog for others to read. So here we have a find and copy question. And what we want to do as we read the text is underline any words that we think might show that she wrote her blog for others to read. And notice we're looking for a group of words, not just one word. So let's read the text. Anusha Space Blog, September the 25th. Everyone wants to know, how do you take a shower in space? How do you brush your teeth? Well, my friends, I must admit keeping clean in space is not easy. There is no shower with running water. Water does not flow here, it floats, which makes it a challenging act to clean yourself. There are wet towels, wet wipes, and dry towels that are used. Now brushing your teeth in space is another joy. You cannot rinse your mouth and spit after brushing, so you end up rinsing and swallowing. Astronauts call it the fresh mint effect. So how do we know that she wrote her blog for others to read, so that she didn't write it just for herself? We'll notice she's written, well my friends. So that shows that she's not writing for herself, she's writing for other people. Also, we have everyone wants to know. And then she answers the questions that everyone wants to know, which again tells us that she's writing for other people. So for this question, we can either answer with my friends, or we can write everyone wants to know. And here the word well is in brackets because you still get the mark if you've included that, but you don't need to, because the word well doesn't show that she wrote it for others to read. Question 9. Look at Anusha's blog entry for September the 27th. Explain how Anusha felt about being in space that day. So here, because we have an explain question, we need to not just say how we think she felt, but also explain the reasons for that. So we need to find evidence or examples in the text. September the 27th. Being weightless has some wonderful advantages. So already we have the word wonderful. So we can imagine that she is feeling happy and positive about being in space because she talks about the wonderful advantages of being weightless. You can lift a really heavy object with one hand and move it around with one finger. You can fly and float around instead of walking. You can do somersaults at any age. So now she's given some examples of the advantages of being weightless. So we could quote these in our answer to support our opinion that she's feeling happy and positive. Everything is effortless. So effortless means that you don't need to make an effort. And we can guess that Anusha likes the fact that things are effortless. Because if we read on, she gives some more examples. If you want to move forward, you slightly touch a wall with one finger and you start moving in the opposite direction. If you have left your book at the other side of the module, no problem. No problem, so that's another clue that she's happy. She likes the fact that things that would be a problem when you're not weightless are not a problem or no problem when you are weightless. You ask someone close to it to send it to you. That means they pick it up and very gently push it towards you. And here it is. Your book flying to you all the way from the other side. Again, we can infer that she's really excited and enthusiastic about what you can do in space. So to get two marks for this question, we need both an appropriate reference to Anusha's positive attitude inferred from the text and development in the form of a relevant quote or example of activities she did in space. So inferred from the text means that we figure it out even though it doesn't say it directly. 
So it doesn't say Anusha had a positive attitude, but we can tell by reading what she's written that she does. Let's read some examples of two mark answers so that we can really understand how we answer these two mark explain questions. You can tell that she liked space because of all the fun things she wrote, like floating about without any effort and lifting heavy things. So notice here we've got what her attitude was, you can tell that she liked space, then we have the word because followed by a reason. And we've even got specific examples of what she did, like floating about without any effort and lifting heavy things. We could have also written, she enjoyed it because of all the wonderful advantages she kept on describing. Or we could have, she felt wonderful being able to do somersaults and flying around. We've got how she felt and we've explained it by giving a reason or examples. Question 10. Match the events below to the year in which they happened. Anusha and Sari went to space. The first man stepped on the moon, Dennis Tito went to space, the International Space Station was built. So here, because we need to find years, we can just scan the text looking for numbers. The first number we can see is in our introduction. In 1969, a man walked on the moon for the first time. So that's 1969. The first man stepped on the moon. Then, if we keep on scanning, we can see that we have 2000 and 2015, but those years aren't given in our question, so we can keep going. Here we have 1998, so let's read the sentence it's in. The ISS was built in 1998, and it is so big that it can be seen from Earth. And we know from reading the text that ISS stands for International Space Station. So the International Space Station was built in 1998. Then if we keep on scanning, we can see that we have 2001 here. The first tourist in space was Dennis Tito in 2001. So that's 2001, Dennis Tito went to space. So that means Anusha Ansari went to space in the year 2006. And we might want to find that in the text, but if we're sure that the other three are correct, we can just move on to the next question. Question 11. Using information from the text, tick one box in each row to show whether each statement is a fact or an opinion. So we need to remember that a fact is a statement that you can prove, whereas an opinion is just someone's feelings about something. So though we're using information from the text, we don't need to refer to the text or look back at the text for fact or opinion questions. We can just think, is this something that we can prove? If we might be able to prove it, we can write fact, and if we can't, then it's an opinion. First, Anusha Ansari kept an online diary. That's a fact, and even if we hadn't read the text and didn't know whether she actually had or not, we could still write fact because it's something that you could prove. We would be able to see the evidence, be able to see the diary online. Brushing your teeth in space is a joy. That's an opinion. Some people, even most people, might agree that brushing your teeth in space is a joy, but you can't prove whether or not something is a joy. That's just a feeling about something. Now, being weightless is endlessly entertaining. Again, some people might think it is, but we can't prove whether something is entertaining. Again, that's just a feeling people have about something. So, it's an opinion. It's true that in the text the author justifies this opinion with lots of examples, but it's still only an opinion, not a fact. And finally, tourists can stay on the International Space Station. That's a fact because it's something we could prove, something we could find evidence for, 
by going to the International Space Station and seeing if there were any tourists there. Question 12. We have In a Flash on page 6. What does this tell you about the burning of rocks in space? So let's find the phrase In a Flash on page 6. While space travel is an impossibility for most of us, you can still be a tourist from here on Earth by spotting shooting stars. Space is full of huge and tiny pieces of rock, which burn up in a flash when they enter the Earth's atmosphere. The flash of burning rock is called a meteor. As it moves through the night sky, you can see the trail it leaves behind, which is what we know as a shooting star. So notice here we found the phrase in a flash, but then read not just the whole sentence, but the whole paragraph that the phrase is contained in, because that will give us some clues as to what it could mean. Now you might have heard the phrase in a flash before. Usually if something happens in a flash, it happens very quickly. So one possible answer is that the rock burns very quickly, but another possible answer is that it burns brightly, because you can see the trail it leaves behind. So you get the mark for either the rock burns very quickly or it burns brightly. Question 13. Find out when a meteor shower is due and arrange to go star spotting with an adult. In this sentence, the word arrange is closest in meaning to set out meet, pack up, or plan. We haven't got to that sentence in the text yet, so let's keep on reading from where we were. On most clear nights, you should be able to see up to 10 meteors every hour, but at certain times of the year, many more meteors appear than usual. When this happens, we call it a meteor shower. Star Spotter's Guide to Seeing Shooting Stars 1. Find out when a meteor shower is due and arrange to go star spotting with an adult. They don't have to be an expert. So notice the context for this sentence. It's what you want to do if you want to see shooting stars. If we read the next few points, it might become easier for us to work out what the word arrange means. 2. Wear warm clothes and equip yourself with a blanket, a pillow, and a torch. 3. You do not need a telescope or binoculars. 4. Go outside and find somewhere that is far away from town lights. So, arrange to go star spotting is what you need to do before you can go outside. So, that's before you set out so we can rule out the first option. What about meat? That sounds more likely, but it still doesn't quite fit, so let's look at our other options. Pack up is unlikely because that's the second point. The second point is telling you what you need to take with you, not this point, not the first point. So plan is our answer. Find out when a meteor shower is due and plan to go star spotting with an adult. That would make sense, because once you've found out when it will happen, when a meteor shower is due, you can then plan to go star spotting so it fits in well with that sentence. So we can tick plan rather than meet. Question 14. How does the information on page 6 make it sound easy to be a star spotter? Give two ways. So in the first paragraph on page 6, we're told you can still be a tourist from here on Earth, so you don't need to go into space. So one thing that we can write here is we can refer to the accessible location. You don't have to travel far to do it, or you don't have to be in space to see them, or you don't have to leave Earth. Or if we look further down the page at the Star Spotter's Guide, they say that you can go with an adult but they don't have to be an expert. So that's another thing, you don't need an expert to show you how to do it. So we have given two ways that make it sound easy, but there is another possible way, another possible answer. 
If we keep reading, we have Wear warm clothes and equip yourself with a blanket, a pillow, and a torch. You do not need a telescope or binoculars. So, you only need things that you probably already have at home. A blanket, a pillow, and a torch. You don't need a telescope or binoculars, things that you might not have. So, that's another answer. You do not need specialist equipment. You can do it with things you'll have in the house, or you don't need a telescope or binoculars. So, you need to have found at least two of these three ways to get both marks for this question. Question 15. Ticked true or false in the following table to show what you should do when spotting shooting stars. First, we have take warm clothes, a blanket, a pillow, and a torch. That's true, because if we look at the second point, we have wear warm clothes and equip yourself with a blanket, a pillow, and a torch. So, these are all things that you'll need to take with you. Though it says wear rather than take, of course you'll take your clothes where you wear them, and we could probably guess that equip yourself means take or get ready. Next, we have stay close to town. We haven't got to the end of the text yet, but if we keep reading, point number four, we have go outside and find somewhere that is far away from town lights. So you don't want to be close to town, you want to be far away. You want to get away from the town, so that's false. Now, point your torch up to the sky. Let's keep on reading. When you have found your spot, lie down on your blanket, Switch off your torch and stare up at the sky. So you first switch off your torch and then you stare up at the sky. You don't have your torch on when you're looking up at the sky. And if we use our common sense here, of course we don't need a torch to see stars. So that's false. You must have binoculars. Well, if we look at point number three, we have you do not need a telescope or binoculars. So, that's false as well.